On that fateful Tuesday, May 3rd, 2016, Margaret Hammond experienced every parent's worst fear as her 31-year-old daughter, Natalie, mysteriously disappeared for 48 agonizing hours. The enigma surrounding her vanishing act was laced with profound concern and gravity. Nestled on Alderney Avenue in Milton Keynes, England, Natalie, a devoted mother of three, lived with her partner Paul. Her unwavering commitment to her children made her the epicenter of their lives, rendering her abrupt absence all the more baffling. Convinced of her unwavering maternal bond, her family and friends couldn't fathom a scenario where Natalie willingly abandoned her children, fueling their growing suspicion that the shadows concealed something sinister. All fingers pointed at Paul. Reports painted a chilling picture of him as mentally and physically abusive, controlling, manipulative, and possessive since the outset of their relationship. Violence had reared its ugly head early, and he subjected her to humiliation and public degradation. Paul cancelled their wedding plans multiple times, leaving Natalie deeply humiliated. In a desperate attempt to regain some sense of control, she went as far as changing her last name to his. Natalie had attempted to escape from this unhealthy relationship twice before, once in 2010, and then again three years later. She had carefully planned her escape, hoping to provide her children with a safe and better life. She declared that she was really going to do it this time, but now she had vanished and the mystery deepened, leaving her family in despair and pointing fingers at the man who had caused her so much pain. In 2013, Natalie's tumultuous relationship with Paul led her to seek refuge in Yorkshire with her three children near her sister. Over the next few months, she began rebuilding their lives. However, after four months, she inexplicably returned to Paul, devastating her family. Fast forward to 2016, Natalie Hemming mysteriously vanished. What followed was a large-scale search operation conducted by Tams Valley Police. Before her disappearance, Natalie had shared with a close friend her intention to permanently leave Paul and had talked about a new colleague named Simon from work. It seemed she was finally breaking free from the toxic relationship. Both Natalie and Paul agreed to an amicable separation, with Paul even searching for new accommodation. On a Sunday afternoon, April 30th, Natalie dropped off her kids at her mother's house, set for her first date with Simon. That evening, her infant daughter refused to settle, prompting a call to Paul. When he arrived, Natalie's car was outside, but she was gone. Her family and Simon tried reaching her, but messages went unanswered, igniting concern. Something felt amiss as her car remained at the house, leaving a disquieting mystery in its wake. After a chilling conversation with Paul, she made the harrowing decision to dial 999, her voice quivering as she reported her daughter missing. Yes, my love, my daughter has been missing for 48 hours, she said. The helpless feeling had driven her to contact the authorities. The police responded swiftly, arriving at Natalie and Paul's home just past midnight. They requested to examine Paul's phone, but he refused, insisting he needed to keep it for potential communication with Natalie. The officers then pressed for a routine search of the house, but again, Paul resisted. He claimed that Natalie had left after expressing the need for some time alone, but he was oblivious to her destination. The following morning, the police detained Paul after a disconcerting interview. As he left the house in custody, he brazenly asked, Have you found Natalie then? The concern about Natalie's welfare was mounting as her whereabouts remained a mystery since her visit to her mother in Hemel Hempstead. Natalie had cut off all contact with her family, not reporting to work or accessing her bank accounts. The detectives found this lack of communication deeply troubling. Further alarm was raised by her six-year-old son's account of a loud, thunderous noise at night and his mother lying under a blanket while his father was seen cleaning something up. The missing red rug became a pivotal point in the investigation. The child disclosed its absence, stating that his father had taken it to work to clean. The rug had not returned. Authorities appealed for information about the rug's whereabouts, extending their search across Aylesbury, Oxford, Milton Keynes, and Bedfordshire. Natalie's disappearance had shaken the community, and the search for her had taken a sinister turn, focusing on the ominous clues left behind in her own home. In a chilling turn of events, the interview with Paul unveiled a horrifying claim that shook the foundations of a seemingly ordinary life. Paul stated that he had spent the entirety of that Sunday at home, yet Natalie returned that evening displaying unusual behavior, a stark departure from her usual self. She confessed to Paul that she had met with a colleague from work and had accompanied him to his home, 
Shockingly, she alleged that she had been raped and required some space to come to terms with the traumatic incident. According to Paul's account, he retired to bed at approximately 9 p.m. that night. When he awoke the following morning, he found that Natalie had disappeared. However, the police discovered a substantial discrepancy in Paul's claims when they analyzed the text messages exchanged between Seaman and Natalie. Despite Paul's assertion that he had not left the house that Sunday, surveillance cameras captured his car, leaving their residence at around 10 p.m. The automatic number plate recognition system provided clear evidence that contradicted his statement. The interview room was filled with tension as the investigator confronted Paul with these findings, insinuating that he might have killed Natalie and disposed of her body. Paul vehemently denied these accusations, insisting that the alleged actions were impossible for him to undertake without anyone noticing. Yet, a forensic examination of the house revealed traces of blood on several pieces of furniture in the living room as well as inside the trunk of Paul's car. Paul tried to explain this away, suggesting the blood could be from accidents he or Natalie had while inside the house. Further investigation into the digital footprint of Natalie's phone revealed that there had been no activity after May 2nd, rendering her completely untraceable. The police now had enough evidence to escalate the case from a missing persons investigation to a murder inquiry, indicating that Natalie was no longer alive. Piecing together the timeline of events, investigators believed that Paul had brutally murdered Natalie on the evening of May 1st. They surmised that upon her return, she informed him of her relationship with Simon, sending Paul into a fit of jealousy that culminated in a deadly assault in their living room, witnessed partially by their own child. Following the gruesome crime, he wrapped her lifeless body and drove it to an undisclosed location late that night. Shockingly, he then returned to the family home where their children were sleeping, maintaining a facade of normalcy. In a macabre twist, Paul told their children that their mother had left the house during the night and took them to Whipsnade Zoo for a bank holiday outing. However, as the evidence continued to mount, Paul's facade began to crumble. On May 6th at 9pm, he was officially charged with the murder of Natalie Hemming. Despite the arrest, the authorities were faced with a daunting challenge finding Natalie's body. Paul remained tight-lipped, withholding the crucial information about her whereabouts. It was apparent to everyone that this was his last desperate attempt to exert control over a horrifying situation. Three agonizing weeks after Natalie's disappearance, human remains were discovered in a wooded area called Chandler's Cross, nearly 30 miles away from their home by a man mowing a meadow. Subsequent forensic analysis confirmed that these remains were indeed those of Natalie Hemming, bringing a tragic conclusion to a disturbing and heart-wrenching saga of domestic violence and murder. In the grim aftermath of a tragic and brutal incident, a courtroom became the stage for justice to prevail. The pathologist's somber testimony painted a chilling picture of a life cut short, leaving behind a shattered family. The victim's body, too decomposed to conclusively determine the cause of death, bore the grim evidence of a fractured skull and arm. When the trial began, Paul said he wasn't guilty of murder. Instead, he claimed he was guilty of manslaughter. He recounted a harrowing tale of a heated argument, a struggle, and an accidental blow with a heavy ornament that led to the tragic fall. He admitted to the cover-up that followed, but denied the intent to kill. However, the prosecution stood firm, unwavering in their pursuit of a murder conviction. In a pivotal moment in November 2016, the jury rendered a unanimous verdict Paul Hammond was guilty of murder. He received a life sentence with a minimum term of 20 years. His chilling parting words to the victim's family in the courtroom betrayed a heart devoid of remorse. In the wake of the trial, the victim's family embarked on a journey of healing and advocacy. Joanne took on the role of raising her nieces while Carrie cared for her nephew. Joanne emerged as an ambassador for domestic abuse awareness, providing support to families who had lost loved ones to this insidious problem. Kirsty, the victim's oldest daughter, found her voice and became a patron of Operation Compass, a charity devoted to protecting children from the scourge of domestic violence. She courageously shared her story in a documentary determined to honor her mother's memory and continue her fight against the shadows of abuse. In the end, a painful chapter of loss and suffering was met with the resolute determination of survivors and advocates, ensuring that Natalie's legacy would live on and her story would be told for the betterment of others. What do you think of our video? 
Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos.